Well, hello everybody. Long time no see. <laughs> it's time for another episode of uh, Ubuntu BST Unix et al. We're finally getting underway again. Uh, I had planned the episode for the 13th week of 2014. Then it became the, <laughs> the 15th week of 2014. And now finally it's being done in the 18th and 19th, in the, in the 19th week of, of uh 2014 so uh, it is definitely been a work in progress there's been a lot of intentions uh, to get things done uh, part of the reason is if you notice we're in a different place we're not uh, on the couch the way we were before we are now in the back room we're not in the back we're in the uh, the library here so the library is going to be our new place for your bunch of BSD and to tell I've got it set up so that I can film in here uh, there is a second editing bay now, so uh, we should start getting uh, more on schedule. I'm going to take the uh, opportunity now to sort of say that in terms of the schedule, I don't think we'll be doing weekly. I think it's going to be bi-weekly. Let's do that first. Let's try to achieve a bi-weekly uh, 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 show first. If we can do bi-weekly, that will be good and let's see if we can sort of keep on track throughout the summer and if we can do that throughout the summer i'll do a bi-weekly show because there is going to be a bit of a hiatus while i do some research uh between um uh july and august so <laughs> uh, but anyways you know th th that's that's sort of the adventure of putting together a tv channel that, that exists solely on linux uh you do run into a lot of challenges uh we are running into the challenges uh and working on the problems with ffmpeg and we'll t go about this in this episode we'll look at open source we'll talk about uh, uh problems within the community personal problems within the community that cause rifts and splits in various projects, this is the most recent one is the split in the FFmpeg uh, pro project. That community there, FFmpeg, split into two communities. They're now FFmpeg and uh, uh, LIBAV. And LIBAV is spelled with a cap capital L. FFmpeg is still the FF, uh, two capital Fs, and then MPEG as the, uh, <laughs> as the rest. And you'll sort of see, I can't remember exactly where it is. Uh, it's going to be to my left. To my left, yeah. To my left is where you will see. Um, let me see. Is it, is it to my left? No, it's to my right. It's to my right. You'll probably see where I'll be putting the graphics here. So if if there if there should be graphic coming up, it's probably going to be to the right, uh, and that's where you will see everything there. So. Um, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be to the right because as I'm sitting on the couch, my left hand is on the end by the wall there, and that's where a lot of the uh, the the the, uh, the graphics go over there to the left, in terms of the station identification graphics, and then on the right we have our interactive graphic. The graphics on the left, if you watch, if you're looking at these graphic overlays here, just as, as a a side note, everything here is done in Linux. Nothing, there is no purchase software here at all. This channel, all the TV shows, everything is being done in Linux. That means we have to work out if there's a particular problem with uh, Caden Live or other bits of software in doing a particular uh, effect or trying to do something new with it. Uh, there is going to be that challenge to sort of uh, look at the work around, try different uh, uh, techniques and try to find a, um, a viable solution to sort of get the video thing done, whatever it, the video effect you want done, done, uh, while uh, using a, a, you know, a Linux-based a Linux system. Uh, now, this is what I said before, and I've said this in, my, in the BTS vlog many times, that uh, I began this project because it was said that you cannot do uh, professional style editing in Caden Live. And on Linux, at Linux there was no options for real serious options for video editing. That's, it was basically said that you could not vlog or produce a YouTube channel on uh, on uh, on Linux. So my step here is I'm going to be producing a PBS style channel on Linux. That's what Cyborg Alpha TV is going to be. It's going to be a PBS style channel, and I'm going to build it solely on Linux. The whole thing here is going to be Linux. 
and it's going to be Linux and nothing but Linux. I'm not going to be buying commercial software. So what you're seeing here on BTS Log and all the other shows, including Ubuntu, BSD, and Linux, you're seeing Linux in action. This is Linux in action. This is Linux at work here. And the particular Linux branch that I've chosen is uh, on the Debian branch is Kubuntu. That's my sort of preference. Uh, my uh, my Kubuntu desktop is a hybridized between KDE and uh, GNOME. I really don't like Unity. And so this is when, when this whole, you know, when, when, when problems pop up, if you're a part of the community and you want to be part of the community, you, if you want to work inside open source, you have to start stepping and finding ways to participate. And this is kind of what I've done. I've tried to find ways of participating. I've tried to find ways to sort of fit in with things. This includes working on, uh, on my open IP TV. This includes the Android development. And the starting point that I've chosen now for myself, and this is kind of going to be um, going to be taking me through my journey of of a developer here. We're not going to be doing a re we're not doing a Linux review show. This is Linux development, but it's done from the from the personal point of view of uh, what's my journey into development. What am I looking at? What am I trying to sort of figure out as a, as I'm starting to become a developer? And you'll see a lot of the interesting challenges. And maybe for yourself, you'll sort of start seeing uh, how you might want to start uh, getting involved in uh, open source, how you might want to contribute, uh, and what the whole concept behind open source is. So, and it's, so, so this is sort of where we're going here. And this is, uh, of course, the opening segment. This is uh, saying hello. This is the opening segment of uh, Ubuntu BSD Nix Natal. Uh, I estimate now that the Ubuntu BSD Unix Natal will be a 45-minute show, uh, broken up into multiple segments. I think uh, four or five different segments. But we'll kind of have to sort of see how we'll kind of have to sort of see how this ends up working out. Anyways, that's it. See you in the next segment. Well, hello and welcome everybody to uh, the uh, first segment of uh, Ubuntu BSD Unix Natal. Uh, welcome back. <laughs> oh, there's no, there's no really, there's, uh, there's no real place to go. Really, you know, there's, there's, there's no real place to go. So, uh, that being said, uh, <laughs> get our timer started so I know exactly how much time I have on the segment to do work with. And so let's get into this segment on open source. The first segment in Ubuntu BSD Unix Natal is always going to be open source. We're going to look at the general community. We'll look at and say we're not going to, now we're going to talk about the split between. Um, uh, FFmpeg, the two different groups, the FFmpeg group, which is the original group, uh, versus the new group, which is LIB, uh, LIB AV, or Library AV. Uh, that's sort of what the, sh what the, the, the sh is short for. Uh, the split really caused the problem because it split along um, distro lines, and this, this is and particularly among Ubuntu and Debian. Debian has seemed to go, seemed to have gone off into this new uh, Li uh, Lib AV. Uh, it was I, I would suspect that it was led by Ubuntu. Ubuntu has been going off on its own direction now in terms of open source for quite a bit of while, for quite a while now. It first started going off and not really caring what the community thought when it went off and did Unity. Uh, it's been bringing in and paying for uh, professional software developers, engineers, uh, but again, it, it, it's done by Canonical, which is a corporation. It is a company, and they are in the business of uh, making software. So, uh, so do you do have certain benefits from it, but at the same time, you have drawbacks. Now, the response, the, a large chunk of the community. Uh, response to Ubuntu's sort of fiddling around, moving from GNOME to Unity, and other changes has prompted different groups to say, "Oh, that's it! I can't handle Unix any. I can't handle uh, Ubuntu anymore." And they'll throw their hands up, they'll walk out, and say, like, "We're going to start our own distro." And so you've had things like Mint, you've had you've had um, uh, Puppy Linux, you've had a, a whole whole bunch of different distros come out of Linux. Uh, uh, come out of sort of come out of uh, uh, of uh, out of Ubuntu simply because the person or the group of people who were using the Ubuntu didn't like the direction that Ubuntu has taken. Well, the problem is is that if you keep doing that, then all it does is it divides the community. And what 
has to happen, and this is what I'm working on, and there are other people out there now I've found as I've gone in and researched this and started get, getting more involved, that there are people who are like have the same type of mind that if Linux, uh, or if Ubuntu is still a Linux-based operating system, and it is, then it doesn't matter what how they ship the distro because you can customize it to anything you wanted to, uh, anything you want to. You have, and I think Linux is, is is supposed to be like that. It's supposed to be uh, uh, community based, community source, and you go out to your community for support, for ideas, and particularly if you want to do something that's not particularly usual or, 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 or normal, that's where you start taking these whole ideas and saying, okay, well, maybe I want to do this, or maybe I want to do that. And in this case here, uh, if uh, when they put Unity on, I was on, I was on Kubuntu, uh, I'm on Kubuntu 13.10 right now, uh, and I didn't want to switch to Unity. And that's what I was saying, well, what's going what's to happen to Kubuntu? And as I began reading through and looking at the different sources, I realized that, you know what, I didn't have to, to choose the Unity option. The, the Unity option was, you know, was something that I didn't have to have. And so basically what I did is I uninstalled uh, I uninstalled Unity. I also went on further went, went, went further to uninstall Pulse Audio and Muon, the uh, KDE package manager, because I wasn't happy with I wasn't happy with with the way Muon actually handles packages on uh, Kubuntu. I felt that the uh, GNOME packaging service, uh, uh, the, the the desktop UI, which uh, produces uh, it's called Synaptic does a much superior job to me one it's 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 far superior than k it was it was even better than uh than k package the k package kit it was it, it, it because you can with um synaptic you can pair synaptic with app get the uh the uh command line uh method of upgrading and doing your your uh your your work uh, you can pair it up very easily with Synaptic. Matter of fact, if something goes wrong in Synaptic, you can easily drop down to Terminal within the Synaptic application and resolve problems at the terminal level. If you're in Muon, that doesn't happen. In, in the KDE platform, you, you, you cannot easily drop down to the command line. It is very difficult in KDE, in some of these uh, these, these package management, management kits, to drop down to command line level if something goes wrong. So what happens? The whole thing it winds up crashing. It, it, it causes fatal errors in the system, and you have to wipe out your entire system. You basically, you end up going back to the Microsoft route, and you have to upgrade all over again. And but that's that's not what you really want to do. You want to really sort of uh, be more aware that you have to. Um, when a problem pops up, if Linux is the way it doesn't work, work properly, you have to drop down to command line and you have to pick up the hood. You have to sort of fiddle around with the engine and fix things up that way. And if the software does not do that, as a Linux uh, standard, you should be able to remove and customize Linux any way you want to. And so that's what I did. I hybridized my desktop. So I have primarily a KDE desktop, but I've brought in GNOME where I need to bring in GNOME or where I wanted to bring in GNOME. And that's the hybridized desktop between KDE and GNOME. And the thing is, is that you can see this sort of, uh, you know, this approach to this was not simply my uh, approach, but other people have done the sort of same thing. But, other, but you have a lot of people going on and saying, well, I'm going to completely do something different. And they wanted a whole new operating system. They wanted a whole new distro. And so that's the way they went up and did it. Uh, you'll see that, uh, that, They've, Ubuntu has completely botched 13.4. 13.4 is, is, was a dead upgrade. Uh, it, it sort of died as soon as it came out. And you had upgrade immediately to 13.10. The upgrade to 13.10 was problematic. There were a lot of problems with 13.10. As a matter of fact, there still are problems, including uh, fatal uh, uh, fatal Linux image upgrades. Uh, the image kernel, the kernel upgrade, and this is the, the, the Linux image, that kernel, when it upgrades, it produces significant fatal errors in 13.10. And it causes you know a, a, a significant amount of problem. But again, it's, it's it's more likely because they've changed things up and they really haven't done a good job of cleaning out things. Now, as I said, they really haven't done a good job of cleaning out things. The it, I find that uh, even though it's not supposed to be a beta, 
And as I talked about this before in terms of development, I'm adding a third level of testing called Gamma. I'm not happy with simply just going to the beta level because when Linux comes out, the the the, 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 uh, the Ubuntu uh, versions come out. Uh, even though when it first comes out, it's got a lot of problems, and it's got a lot of what I call Microsoft type of problems, and that means that when a fatal crash occurs, you have to wipe out the entire system and do a fresh new install. You can't simply upgrade from one point to the next, uh, and that's not the way things should be in, in, in a Linux distro. If a Linux distro is going to be good, you should be able to upgrade from one point to the other without having to wipe out the system, without having to MS it in terms of wiping out the system and starting with new with a fresh install. You should be able to upgrade. That doesn't occur until uh, six months, six to nine months after the uh, initial release of the version. So if you're uh, technically, if you had just upgraded to uh, 13.4, uh, you shouldn't have upgraded to 13.10 until six months had passed plus one or two extra months. So basically, 13.10 uh, is October. You would leave it November, December, January, February, March. April is the sixth month. May, June. So technically, to get it clear shot at, at 13 at 134 you don't upgrade uh, you don't upgrade uh, to 134 until until June right 1310 right no, 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 you don't uh, sorry about that it's 1210 to 134 right? Uh, I'm behind on my things here. Anyways, you have a, a, a six month, six or seven month lag. So basically, and this is the way I was doing it. I was uh, six months plus six months plus two months behind on my version. So let's say uh, this is the version. This is the version now is is fourteen fourteen four. I would just now be moving into thirteen ten. That's the way it would be. I'd just now be moving into thirteen ten. But I was forced to move into 13.10 early because of the end, because of the problems that popped up with 13.4 that they stopped supporting it. So you we were forced to migrate ahead of time, and this caused uh, you know a fair bit of problems. It wasn't the easy transition that it should have been. And this is sort of my and one of the problems that popped up was this whole FF, FFmpeg split. They really did a job where they tried to discredit FFmpeg, which isn't the proper thing to do. But if my understanding, and this is my understanding of Linux, my said, I said, wow, this is open source. This is Linux. I should be able to run both systems side by side. I don't have to take sides FFmpeg or LIB, LIBAV. I don't have to take sides. I can choose both and see which one works best for me. So I decided to go out and take a look and see, okay, well, how do I find out what's going on in the community? And so that's what I did. I started searching on Google, looked for FFmpeg, looked for the different things that were going on, and started reading through the community. I got onto a Debian list. I talked to people on, people on, on the Debian list in terms of what was going on from their aspect of, of FFmpeg uh, and the, the, the goal to bring things back. Uh, I finally stumbled on... Um, I finally stumbled on... What you call it? I finally stumbled on... Uh, <laughs> I finally stumbled on a copy of FFmpeg. Actually, and it was a bizarre thing. I didn't find it initially on the FFmpeg website. I, I came to this uh, site, this section, of, actually the section of the FFmpeg site, quite by accident. It wasn't initially intended. Then I actually had instructions on how to compile and make your own FFmpeg right on Kubuntu. And so that's what I did. I went there and set it up. I did a couple tests with it. And it seems to be okay so far. I haven't gone done an extensive test on it yet. That's still to come. But enough of the test was done that I was able to go back to the FFmpeg code and say, okay, well, things look good now. I'm going to go ahead and set up on Launchpad to bring the uh, FFmpeg uh, direct from FFmpeg.org com when I compile onto uh, Launchpad for Kubuntu for Kubuntu user. Uh, uh, one of the other one of the other um, 
people, uh, his name is Sundab, that was the PPA that I had gone to. Uh, the PPAs are the packaging archives. And uh, this PPA dealt with FFmpeg, it dealt with Caden Live, it dealt with ML, uh, uh, MLT, and these are the, sort of the, editing, the video editing packages. And up until 13.4, this guy had been maintaining a separate package that the other people weren't paying attention to, that the Ubuntu people, the official Ubuntu people, weren't paying attention. So this guy in the community got in and said, I'm going to take care of this. And he did. He set up a package like, okay, I'm taking care of uh, FFmpeg, I'm taking Caden Live, I'm taking MLT, and I'm going to handle and ma maintain these packages myself. And when I watched this, I saw, well, see what he did. He did a really good job. His work was very good. And it, it kept the Linux uh, ideal of being open source, being uh, configurable, highly configurable, being tailorable alive. So that you could run Ubuntu, you could run Kubuntu, and not necessarily worry about, well, am I being forced into a particular choice? And so that's what I've done. I've now set up and, and begun working on uh, the experimental nightly FFM project. Uh, I set up a launchpad, and you should be able to start following, following this. I will put the links in the description down below to the launchpad things. And so this is sort of my announcement that I'm coming into uh, uh, Linux development. I'm going to be doing uh, the development on uh, Ubuntu, particularly in the Kubuntu frame. Uh, I have my launchpad set up and we're beginning to start rolling along. And that's kind of where we are right now. And it is going to be a product. It's not something that's going to happen overnight. This is something that I have to learn how to do. I have to learn how, I've said I've done the compiling already. What I have to do now is I have to learn how to package. I have to test the packages out. I have to do uh, testing on FFmpeg to see how it works in comparison to anything else that's coming up. Uh, I have to look for bugs. I have to look, look for functionality. There's a lot of different things, a lot of sort of quality assurance issues that have to be dealt with uh, before the project really gets into its meat and I start uploading the uh, the finished Debian packages. So it is going to be a process, but we're starting. This is the, the, All projects have a starting point, and this is this FFM project. This is my FFM project. This is my starting point. This is where I've chosen to start. This is how I've chosen to start. And you can follow along with me. So on the next segment, we're going to come back and we're going to talk about uh, Open IP TV and Android. So that's going to be a fun thing to do. Anyways, see you in the next segment. Well, welcome back, everybody. <laughs> this is the uh, third segment of uh, Ubuntu. Uh, well, this is the, yeah, the, 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 the second or third segment of Ubuntu BSD and uh, uh Where are we now? Uh, we were talking about FFmpeg in the beginning of the FFm project, and this leads me into the discussion on Open IP TV and Android. Why? Because FFmpeg, if you have uh, an app, or most of your video apps on uh, Android, well, this is true for Open IP TV. If you have a Google TV box or these any, any stick, anything connected to your TV that is Linux based, and that's Android based. Uh, then you're dealing with, you're more likely not dealing with FFmpeg, you're dealing with an FFmpeg code. So this FFmpeg issue, the project, really does affect what's happening on Android down, uh, uh, further on down the line. And so, uh, as I said, in the open, uh, open, uh, uh, open, uh, open source uh, ideals, to continue the open community, to continue the, the ideals of, of being open, um, I decided to work on a product called Open IPTV. And this is because uh, IPTV now is being uh, invaded by the majors. You have the major media companies coming in and carving out a niche for themselves. As a matter of fact, they're going to carve out a majority of the space for IPTV for themselves. So what's going to happen is you're going to have to choose AT&T or you're going to have to choose Verizon. In other words, you'll be restricted to a Verizon package, a, a, an AT&T package, a, a Bell Canada package, a Rogers Canada. In other words, you're going to be restricted to a very tiny group of, uh, of micro-internets. And you're going to be locked in there. 
and the only thing you're going to be able to do is see the stuff that's there. As soon as you go off their network's content, they're going to start charging you to the point where, well, you don't, you can't afford to go off on somebody else's network. In other words, they're in the process right now, and this is sort of the battle that's going on uh, in Washington and in many of the, the, the political capitals of the world. They're talking about uh, bring in these, these security laws for the internet and a lot of these security laws are actually written by these major corporations and what they're doing they're trying to to take away people's choice on the internet to, to close off the internet to shut it down and this is good this is actually good politically because uh, the night where the night the, the, the internet for many politicians for many governments and regime, regimes, has been an absolute nightmare because you can't control information. You can't control what the people see. You can't control what they hear. And it really does provide a bit of a choice. Now, that's been damped significantly uh, by the whole copyright issue. And, this, and, and anyone who's been on YouTube for, for uh, a significant, significant amount of time knows the whole copyright issue. There's no, there, 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 is so, there is no debate on what copyright is about. Copyright is about censorship. It's about destroying your right to say something different than somebody else is saying. Uh, and so what happens is, well, you want to use proof, you want to go and take a, uh, a reference from someplace else. Well, you can't do that because, well, you're taking that reference is you, you, uh, without permission. If you don't go and ask, them, hey, can I trash your company? Can I give you a negative review? You know, that's how you have to do it. It's not free speech anymore. You have to get permission in order to say something negative about somebody else in terms of presenting the evidence, you know, showing the proof of things. Uh, and, and this is how videos get taken down. This is, I mean, it's, it's, it's really mean spirit. I mean, they're, they're going after kids. You know, some kid, you know, loves Selena Gomez, you know, is wild about all, the, you know, the Justin Bieber song. And they go and produce a Justin Bieber video. They create their own video to Justin Bieber's music. What happens? They get shut down. This is, this, this is, these are, this is the government going after little kids, little girls, you know. Let's go back to the stereotype and, and see this big burly man government going and beating up a little 13, 14 year old girl. <laughs> you know, this is what's going on, this is going on, what's going on on YouTube. I mean, it's, it's, it's maddening. So you do have to the, the fight this and the way to fight this is with the open source, with, op with, with the whole open ideal. And so just the way you do open source, you can, and, and they come up and now that they're working on open hardware, there's no reason why you can't do open IPTV to create an open environment for IPTV that will keep the options open for people who want to choose something other than the major choices. Yeah, you know, if you want, if, if you're part of the average crowd and you want to be an average crowd and you want to have these sort of average choices, fine, no problem. But there are people there who don't want these average choices, and this is what Open IP TV is all about. This is what o the whole open community is about. It's about providing choice other than the mainstream choices. You, you, you're given alternative choices. And you're free to take you're, 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 you're free to take whatever choices you want to take. It's not if somebody else, or, oh, you have to take this choice or you have to take that choice. It should be like Linux and it is now in more cases than not Linux based. And it gives you a wide variety of options. And But the problem is the company that came in and did this and sort of taken the lead now, Android, Promise to make Android more Linux-like. Promise to bring Android back into the Linux fold, but has not done that. What they've done is, uh, since uh, I mean, f uh, Ice Cream Sandwich 4.0 looked like, hey, it's going to be Linux. They're going to bring back full full-blown Linux into into and into Android. Come 4.4. It's more uh, uh, Android. Android is more restricted than than ever. So Android did not go towards the Linux open source. It went away from Linux open source. And this is where it now comes to the issue that uh, the community has to get back involved with Android. Uh, there's no point in going off and creating something else. Let's get back into Android. Let's get back into developing Android. And let's get back into developing open choice. Let's bring open source, the full Linux, back into Android. Let's bring open choice ch choices Open, I mean, let's bring open source choice back to Linux. Because what's happening now is, if you look at the, the, the at the Play Store on on uh, for Google's Play Store, most of the project that they're, they're, that are that people are charging for come from open source. They're taking open source code, porting it over to Android, 
and then selling the app. There needs to be an open source, a clear open source choice for Android, and there isn't one right now. And so this is where I'm taking this whole FFmpeg issue, and, and I'm gonna be working on an Android IDE, and the whole point is to bring an open Android env environment into a, a sort of an open source environment, a full open source environment into Android and, and have a Play Store type of thing that, it, you know, it, which is, uh, in many cases, mirrors the uh, open source repositories in Linux, Red Hat, and whatever. So, in other words, we're bringing choice back. Anyways, um, we'll continue talking about uh, the whole IPTV and Android in a few minutes. Uh, because I gotta stop the camera right now because we have to do the next segment. Alrighty, we're back. Got the timer started again. Uh, what happens is on this camera here, and this is sort of the way it is, I use a lot of refurbished equipment. And the same thing is no, the same thing is true for my Androids. Uh, the Android devices, they're all it's all refurbished, used, uh, overstock, something like that. It's it, it, I buy everything discount, that's why. I've got the sign up that says Freegan. I'm a Freegan because, well, I don't really buy anything that's new. And I'm limited to uh, eight minutes of uh, filming, eight minutes of video. Then I have to stop, reset the camera, and then I have another eight minutes. So I have a timer here that tells me, okay, where my time is. And so even though this is going to be one segment, uh, sort of the second segment, it's <laughs> broken up. <laughs> <laughs> You'll see the, the cut mark um, into two segments because if I want uh, if I want to do more than eight minutes, uh, I'm planning to do 12, 12 to sixteen minute segments. That's basically eight minutes plus another four, and that gives you your time here. Uh, <laughs> um, I don't know how things are working out. I have it written out. I have production notes here, but I'm not that good yet at following the production notes. I have to see later on how this is going to come out. Um, <laughs> that's kind of a side note now anyways. Um, back to our discussion on uh, Open IP TV and the new product that I'm working on called Android IDE. Now there are Android IDEs out there, uh, but they, you have to pay for them all. The goal is to bring something like Eclipse into uh, Android and keep it free and open. In other words, you want to keep the this is the whole goal here is to create an open source, a clear open source choice, uh, just like you have repositories in, in, in the Debian project, just like you have Eclipse, just like you have uh, NetBeans and so on and so forth. On Linux, all these choices are open and free. There isn't a fee for them. Well, what's happening now? If you look at the Play, Play Store, go to the Play Store. Look at uh, uh, at any of the um, at any of the uh, media players that charge. Look at look look at the stuff that that uh, does video capture. All that's all that's open source. You'll find if you go look at, at how they develop the application, they went into open source. You have people now, and he's done a good job. And I'm not you know upset at him for this. You know, people do need to make some money sometimes, right? But the thing is, is that if you're taking from open source and you're reselling that open source, there really needs to be acknowledgement here that, you know, you know you're taking open source. And this one guy started working on Octave. And Octave is a great, his Octave, Octave, Octave package is very good. It works very well. He's done a very good job at it. But he's selling open source software. And from my understanding of this, this is, an, this, this is a violation of the open source agreement that you're not supposed to commercialize and sell open source. You can sell services to it, you can sell support, you can sell uh, t-shirts, in other words you can sell a variety of things surrounding the product that you're, you're producing but you can't sell the software itself that you work on. That's the whole purpose of the GNU license. Although I did go into the GNU license look, look, looked in, uh, li at licensing open source and there's a lot of different choices when it comes to licensing for open source, and the question is, you know, which choice do you choose? Do you choose, you know, uh, uh, um, uh, one license? You know, do you choose the Apache license? Do you choose the um, uh, the uh, Firefox license? Do you choose uh, GNU license? And GNU has multiple different licenses. There's more than one type of GNU license, so <laughs> these things do have to be looked at. And we, we, uh, 
this is in many cases a beginning. This is sort of a march towards uh, my involvement in open source. There's a lot of looking around. There's a lot of mapping that has to be done. A lot of questions have to be sort of answered before we start really moving ahead further. Uh, but it's getting done. That's the thing. It's getting done. Things are being worked on. And that's actually a good thing. So uh, I'm going to leave it here. I think our time is now up for uh, Ubuntu BSD and Intel and it's for this segment. So we'll end things here. The goal, hopefully, uh, we'll be back in two weeks. So it's not going to be the 19th week. So we'll be back on the 21st week with a uh, another episode. Uh, that's the goal anyway. So, <laughs> you know, we, we set the goals, but you may not actually reach it. It really depends on what's going to happen with the new editing desk. I created a new network editing desk. Uh, I'm not going to be editing Ubuntu BSD and Unix Intel and Beauty and the Geek here. This is going to be for one thing. I have another editing desk back on the electronics bench right now, next to the electronics bench. Uh, I've sort of split up the space and put an editing bench there. Uh, and that's going to handle a bunch of BSD in the town. It's going to handle Beauty and the Geek. And we'll go from there. But the question is, it's this is still 13.4. I haven't upgraded this one yet. Just to keep it safe, I'm going to try 13.10 to see how it works in terms of its editing on Caden Live. It should work all right. Uh, it installed, Caden Live installed, no problem on there. It's the latest version, but you don't know until you sit down and actually try it and, and do a project on it, an editing product, that's when you know, does it work or does it not work? Anyways, uh, see you in two weeks. All right, goodbye. Democratic Earth. Earth.